<laughs> we will find out. We will find out. <laughs> find out soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. We will find out soon enough. That's okay. We have a whole group of new persons trained to handle it. <laughs> have I do what? We have a whole group of new persons trained to handle it. So that's okay. All right, all right, all right. For the second wave. <laughs> in, huh? in case we have a second wave. <laughs> yes, that batch, yeah. Whole week <laughs> last week, we had all of us busy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. People don't understand. They need to be vigilant. Eh? Continuously. Um, trying to get on the computer. Sorry? I'm trying to get on the computer, but it was giving trouble, so that's the that alarm with the phone. Oh. Um, so okay. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay, cool. Thank you. Bye-bye. Your... I have the phone. Bye-bye. I have the phone, people. <laughs> Bye, Glenda. <laughs> I'm curious to know your views about what the situation Good afternoon, is Hi. in Guam over the weekend? Um, I wasn't following it. Um, the only part I saw, the, the, the good part that I saw, if, it, if there's a good part to it, is that the, um, the policeman doing the pacifying seemed to have done, you know, a, a fairly decent job. Um, I, when, I, when I first moved here, Sylvan McIntyre was the community um, liaison person. And I think he was, he was fairly effective, you know. I, he came across as, you know, okay. as projecting the right image for the for the police service. And I think this this guy seems to have um seems to have the same level of talent. Okay. So I don't know what this you know this actual situation was, but in terms of trying to pacify the crowd and thing, and not not adding fire, not adding fuel to it, you know, it's yes. seems to have done a very a very good job. Yes, I saw I saw that in okay. that um as well. It's unfortunate. I mean, if 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 the reported story is correct that it was a case of mistaken identity, that's that's it's sad. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. Yeah. I mean, to, to shoot a footballer in the in the leg, I mean, you know, it's, I know. You know yeah. Lots of earnings and thing, you know, it, it could get it could get yeah. sticky. You know, it could get sticky. It could yeah. Get, it could get sticky. Um, I realize the dog lives matter thing is sailing along, eh? And he's coming in real fast. <laughs> real Good fast. afternoon, everybody. Good yeah. afternoon. Yeah, that, that aspect is just sailing along, boy. Sailing along. along. <laughs> everybody log up and thing, and we're just sailing along. <laughs> I don't know. Did you get a chance to look at the Oliver, um, the Oliver play, or had you seen it before? I haven't seen it before, but I looked at it when you sent it. Yeah. At least I, I, at least saw it, so I'm it. Okay. But okay. I just thought it, it showed all the aspects. I think Kenya noticed that too. That you know, the fact that yes. there's a class difference. Maybe how the police reacted differently when it's. When is a, a big short person that call as when you know? Yeah, to the regular. Um, was, was man. Not, was not part of that get killed. You know? No. <laughs> it was Fifi. You know, Fifi. But um, one of the things that I think a lot of people is missing that um, not only in like a community like where the, the incident happened, yeah. it happens all about that dogs run out at vehicles and. Sometimes the driver just don't see it. And they just don't see it. The, the law, but the other thing too is whether or not this is a private road. Uh -huh. No, it was a private road and then, you know, it gets a little more complicated. Um, yes. You know, but I know, you know, the, the law says that, you I mean, your dog, well, in some countries, the dog has to be licensed. It has to have a, has to have a a recognizable owner, you know, is the same is the same as you have with um with with stray animals as well, because in Tobago, what happens is that cows and cattle damage a lot of cows in Tobago, because okay. 
cows sometimes take it upon themselves to sleep in the road. Because hmm. the asphalt warms up, you know. Yeah, it warms up. Better. So they, yeah. Just like you're coming along a dark road, and there's, you know, a couple hundred pounds of, of beef sitting in the road. <laughs> it is going to mash run, up your car. Yeah, run it. straight into it. Yeah. It's going to mash up your car, right? And then what happens then is that, you know, your vehicle is licensed to be on the road. That animal isn't supposed to be on the road. You know? And hmm. that's when they that's when they never have an owner. They never have an owner. You know that there was there was a time, you know, when we had a saying in agriculture in Trinidad that if you want to find out who owns something, move it. Because only when you move it, the owner will turn up, you know. The owner would turn up. Only time you're distressing people, nobody owns it. But if you move it, if you're confiscated. Somebody will come and say, oh, that's the last animal, and they have 12 children to mine. And... <laughs> so, they yeah. have all these stories to give. All these stories, all these stories. <laughs> so I think that, um, you know, that, that is going to be a, a fairly touchy one. Um, and as I said, because of how it was framed, you know what I mean? The Caucasian family that, that be the man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every time they mention it, they make sure they mention that it's a Caucasian family. That <laughs> Not black. So yeah. So I suppose it would have been less egregious if it was a, a black family that beat him up. But the fact that it's a white family beat him up. They just ride him with the black life. All that is the, com the communication gets warped because of the emotive language that you're using, right? Yes. Uh, it's something that I'm going to spend a little time on today, if not today, on Tuesday, about the language to the use of language, the choice of words. Okay. The choice of words to you know. It's one thing to be, to be passionate. Hello, hi, 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 hi. It's one thing to be passionate, you know, it's another thing altogether to be, you know, um, using motive and yeah. inflammatory, you know, because if you use inflammatory language, you know, if you, if you use language that is meant to excite people and that will, you know, will have people acting up. Um, and saying that is a Caucasian family that did them. And then, and then Based the first, on the words, you get a different reaction. And then the first, the first report was that the whole family beat them. The whole family, four of them. <laughs> right, I remember when, um, when we first used to go to Suriname, I had a colleague who was a seaman. And he said that when they go to Suriname in the old days, you know, they would invariably get into fights when they're on shore leave, right? So they'll go to a bar, get drunk, and invariably get into a fight. And you see what used to happen is that everybody in the village will cut your tail. And then when you're on the, the side of the ground, dog will come and pee on you and fall will come and pick you. <laughs> it's a total, it was a total. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it, it was that kind of scenario there, you know, where the, the whole family come out. And the whole family, take, everybody. I take a touch, you know, I mean, everybody take a touch, you know, I mean, everybody hit him a lash, you know. <laughs> I, you know that, that one was, you know, kind of hard to swallow, right? but we shall see. They will have the day in court, I suppose. But now it's like everybody even have a story to tell because, I mean, I was looking on, looking on, on Facebook and... There were persons who coming out of the loop and saying no nobody touched the man and everything. And I think last Saturday or Sunday I saw a clipping on Facebook where the family lawyer come out at South St. George and he was talking about forgery and people going yeah, to yeah, yeah. And for me, the way he said it is like I, I am that, coming for all you. The back of the back end of the case, yeah. That is yeah, it. the way he said it is like, look out, I am coming. I got that. I got that impression too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right. So there are so many. I think we can start. I think we can continue now. Um, all right. Okay, so I, I think we have all the people who are going to be here, are here. 
All right, so we can get started. There are about three things I want to tackle this, this evening, afternoon. One, I want to go through some points on the course outline. Secondly, I want to talk about the group assignment. And then thirdly, I want to talk about your, your, not only your final assignment, but a little bit about group dynamics and how, how people interact. I started talking about it last, last week, but I want to spend some more time on it today because I think it is, to me, the most important that you guys, important lesson that you guys will learn out of this group, group exercise. Yeah, I really think so. And I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Hello, mic is on. Yeah, right. So I'm going to. I'm going to go through the corrected version of the group assignment, and I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you your grade. I'm going to tell you what how many marks each of you got because they, all of you got the same mark, obviously, and uh, and then I'll say something about the the exercise itself. All right. So for this first 40 minute period, let us look at the course outline. Any, other, any questions, by the way? Anybody realize that I mean that a number of people did not look at the recording or were not at class and did not submit their second, their second assignment on time? Uh, as of five o'clock, that was the end of that. Um, if you didn't send it by five, well, you know, I more or less sent a reminder yesterday or Sunday. Was it yesterday or Sunday? For those who might have might have slipped them when they did the when they looked at the recording. But remember, you have a responsibility if you can't make it to class to at least look at the recording and read the WhatsApp chat. So there's absolutely no excuse because we record everything and I, I made the recording publicly available so that in the comfort of your own home, you know, at two o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon, you can, you can review the, the session. All right. So any questions, comments before I, let's say a few words about the course outline. Because I think there's some important things there that we need to re-emphasize. Yeah? Okay. And the first topic I mentioned that when we talk about marketing, we really ought not to talk about marketing without having particular metrics in mind. In other words, there should be a there should be numbers associated with what we are attempting to do. So if we are targeting a particular population, a particular demographic, we should have an idea of how many people we're looking to reach. But without, without that, we have no idea of how effective our strategy was. If this strategy is just to broadcast a statement and there are no mechanisms for feedback, then we will have no idea whether we did a good job or not. All right, so I want to just underline that in the, in the course outline, course content, this whole business of metrics and measuring. You do not want to find yourself in a situation where you're developing a marketing plan and at no point do you have a mean, means of measuring the impact of the, of the marketing plan. But it's formal mechanism or informal mechanism. Then I kept referring again to these Joker 5 questions. Who are your clients? Who are your customers? I mean, I've been saying this in every course we have done so far in this associate degree. It is important that you ask yourself, who will drop dead if we close down tomorrow. 
if your organization Just letting in some more people. Yeah. If your organization collapses tomorrow, literally, who go dead? Good afternoon. Right. Good afternoon, sir. Who go dead? You know, who will drop down and who will come out in the road and protest and say, how oh, they could close down Spectre, how Spectre could close down, or how this organization or the other can close down. If you if there are no there's no constituent because I left like that. Clearly, that's what you're doing. And uh, Noja, Noja, I think your mic is on. Yeah. Right. So you have to ask yourself, you know, really, who are you really doing all of this stuff for? Who are your, who are your customers? Who are the benefit of you? Um, I think that's Belinda's. Belinda, Belinda, it's your um, your No, mic. that's Belinda, sir. Oh, Belinda. 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 Okay, right. Yeah. So you have to ask yourself, you know, who do you really matter to? Because sometimes we in organizations and we feel we're doing such a fantastic job, but. The people who we feel are benefiting from our services, neither here nor there. If we had to shut down tomorrow, they probably wouldn't know. And that has to be a very, very bad sign. Because it means either what you were, what you were doing for them wasn't appreciated or seen to be done, or you were not getting the credit for it. They probably thought that it was government or somebody else doing it. And Meanwhile, because you do not have a proper marketing plan in place or marketing strategy, your work went literally unnoticed. So that if not wishing it, you had to close down. Nobody will be up in arms because as far as they are concerned, you know, they didn't know what you were doing for them anyhow. Have any of you been in that situation where you were working with a CSO, working with an organization, and the beneficiaries weren't aware of many of the things that you're doing for them or on their behalf. Anybody? No, well, you were all fortunate enough to be in organizations that got no. the credit. I you. am one like that. All right. Tell us. Oh, sorry, like, it happens I mean, all the time. I have to call Sorry, Glenda. That's that. Let me ask you, Janet, first. Yeah, Janet. Like, um, say, like Pam, for instance. Oh yeah. Um, there is a number of, you know, parts of the structure that the students doesn't know. They are the beneficiaries. Okay. But they don't know when there's financial difficulties. They don't know exactly who their patrons are. They don't know, you know, necessarily. They know a few. Um, because in a case where real value is giving us food, mm -hmm. they would be aware of that, some of them, because, you know, you might need to do a little publicity picture here and there. Mm -hmm. But there are other partners that are involved and um, at different levels, and they don't have a clue. They don't know their board of directors. They don't know who are the people making decisions for them. But remember that that works both ways. Eh? There are some organizations where you really do not necessarily want the beneficiaries to know who are the people um, doing the country. But I think right? it, it would have come full circle for us recently because they were on the verge of being closed. And the judge had to make a decision to bring the beneficiary in. And that's how we were able to keep the doors open and not have government take over completely or close the establishment because the judge now got to the point where two different sets of directors is fighting for leadership. And he called the beneficiaries to make a decision. And then some of them were aware as what is happening. And then they had to come forward to say how they've benefited and how they need the organization 
for us to keep the doors open. All right, all right, all right. All right. So sometimes it could get really bad. Before, before I respond to that, let me hear, Glenda, you were about to say something, sorry. I was just saying, um, my, my mic was muted. I was gonna say, no, it happens all the time in organization, even in government places, it happens all over. True, true, true. Yeah, your work and it's not valued and, you know, some persons are afraid to speak up and then some persons, they do it, you know, but not wholeheartedly. So, you know, that's the, the, the side effects of it. You do it not with the best of your ability. You don't put all your effort in it. So then you, you end up with a, a, you call it a half hazard, you know, product or end product, you know. And some persons, they do it because they like doing and they just do it anyhow, regardless of what kind of feedback you get or, or do not get, you know? So yeah. it happens all over. All right. Do you, do you guys remember, I think it was our second lecture or so in Times you see face to face, where I mentioned that this attitude that some people in the development sector have that, you know, that they are doing, that they are the martyrs, you know, and they're doing all of this for you. Know, and they don't, they don't expect anything in return and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I kept saying that, you know, we all get a reward, right? If you're a Christian, you're going to get a heavenly reward. You're doing it because you know this is the right thing to do and you're guaranteed eternal life afterwards. So it's not as if, you know, there's all the goodness that you have and no benefit whatsoever. You're just doing it. We all have a, a reason for doing what we're doing, right? If we are motivated by money, then everybody stands up and says, oh, that is, so, that is terrible, you know, because we, we know what the motivation is. You're only doing it for the money, or you're only doing it for the fame, or you're only doing it for the recognition. But we, everyone, there's no one can say that they're involved in anything, and they don't expect to get any reward. If, even the reward is just that warm feeling that you get inside from having helped somebody. Right? It is an, some people use it as a for air of superiority as well, because there are some people who use their morality as a sword. And, you know, they, any opportunity they get, they tell you all the good things they have done and have you feeling like, you know, less than a person because, I mean, you have not made these kind of sacrifices. You know, I will give, I will give a person on the street, a poor person on the street, my last dollar, you know, right? If you go out to the biblical references, you know, when you're giving your charity, you're not supposed to be going about it, please telling everybody that you just give your last dollar. I mean, if, if you remember the, 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 the parable, I mean, you know, it is, it is more significant when a widow gives her last talent or her last coin than somebody with a hundred coins giving one to a poor person that making a big party show for it, right? So we have to be clear that Whilst we are into marketing and we want to publicize, we want to get credit for what we are doing because we have an ulterior motive. We always have an ulterior motive. Our ulterior motive is that we want to promote the organization so that we'll be able to attract resources to continue doing the good work that we do. Because in the absence of that, we'd have to finance everything ourselves. We have to depend on just the membership to do stuff because you wouldn't get any volunteers. You wouldn't be able to come to talk to a, a, a Raylene a, a, or a Lazarus or somebody and say, you know, I want you to help us with so and so and so. When you don't have a track record, there's no proof that you've ever done anything of significance. I mean, why should anybody volunteer their time, right? Or bring their talents to bear, right? So I hope I'm, I hope I'm being very clear here. We are involved in the people business. I don't know how many different ways to say it. You cannot be involved in development if you are not in the people business. Um, so can this happen by accident? When I say by accident, mm. that for, for example, mm. you have a club in my area and they had an event, right? Mm. And the minister for the area found out about it, by the way, and she came to the event and she did walk around and chat with people. And some of the people in the community said that she was the reason for the event happening. And the persons who work hard, and especially like those who don't care about the politics thing, 
mm. they got all upset. Right? They got all upset. They called for people to talk and thing. And then I was like, no, have a conversation with her. You don't know how she find out. You don't know if she come to do anything wrong or anything. Mm. And you know, I went and I asked her and I said, she said, no, she found out about it on Facebook mm -hmm. and she just came. So she came as support. And it's sad that since after that happened, an event that they have every Thanksgiving, it never happened again. All right. You know, there, there again, the, 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 the communication would have been key there, right? I mean, you took the initiative to talk to her, right? But mm -hmm. we know, I mean, we, we don't have to be, we don't have to be very shy about it. We know that politicians will steal the spotlight if you give them a chance, right? That is their job, right? Mm -hmm. Their job is visibility and making sure that, you know, that when election time come around, you remember that I was the one here on top of giving who cut the ribbon and, you know, paint the wall and, and do all kinds. Of so that is, I have no difficulty with that. What I would have a difficulty with is if you have a, a non-aligned group, a group of young men in the community who decide, okay, we're going to paint this community center. We're going to paint the community center. We're going to have a Thanksgiving. We're going to buy, treat something for the kids. And on the day itself, in the midst of all the publicity and all the cameras, a government official turns up who had nothing to do with the planning and so and decides to make a speech. Now, I would have a difficulty with that. Now, before you go on your high horse, if you, too, if you happen to be you know, connected to, to, to politicians and political events, there is a legitimate reason for the government official to come and talk here, yeah? because we just mentioned it was a community center. The community center wasn't built by the youth, right? So that there's still, you know, you could only enhance something that was there already, right? So there's still some level of respect that you need to give to the politicians because they're the ones who got the community center there in the first place. The fact that you're using it for an event now, you still have to give them a little, you know, a little leeway, right? Now, having said that, how does the marketing committee of the CSO handle that? The way to handle that is to make sure that since the minister or the representative is coming, you're almost guaranteed a certain amount of press exposure. So now you have to be ready to craft uh, not only a response, but an entire scenario where the representative can come in and say all that he or she wants, but the outgoing message is that the boys club of St. Bob's is who arranged this thing, right? And we're getting a chance now for the national community to realize that the boys club of St. Bob's organized this big time given, you know, and the fact that the minister was there is, you know, neither here nor there, or the, or the, or the parliamentary representative was there. We oh, yeah, think, you think that was not a vehicle? Sorry, I missed that. I got disconnected, so I missed everything in the last five minutes. Oh, sorry, sorry. We could, it's, it's, it's recording, so I won't, I won't repeat it. Right? Pick it up when we, when we, um, you're going to have to change over just now because um, you realize Kevin Blancas this evening. So, Karen, sorry, Blancas this evening. So, I don't know if Kenya, if we can, Kenya? Uh, Kenya, can you do the next one? Oh, sorry, Karen said earlier he was on a meeting, so maybe that's why he wasn't able to do the um. Thing. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Can you, are you on? Can you um? Can you do the next, the next forty minutes? First. Hello. Yeah, can you can you do the next forty minutes first? Yes, yeah. I can. Okay. Well, well, um, sorry. I can send you a link as quick as possible. I just stepped over. Oh, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't realize you were on. So you want to do it now? Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So as I was saying, so you have these politicians and representatives that, 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 may, that may turn up, but you can't always see it as them coming to steal your thunder. You have to see them as a vehicle for you to be able to send to get your message out. Um, I don't know how many of you remember this exhibition put on by, by Specto 
in 2018, a glimpse in that kind of smart future, right? Now, this was the first carbon neutral future driven exhibition to deal with climate change and climate smart effects and impacts and so in the country. And I dare say in the region. Now we got good support from Glenlay. We got good support from the parliamentary rep for that area, that part of St. Patrick. I don't remember her name now. But we did not get the full participation of the Ministry of Education. They gave us permission for the schools in the area to attend the, it was over two days for them to attend the Friday. It was a public holiday on a Friday, right? And uh, we were able to use the fact that a, a, a parliamentary rep was coming to make sure that we got proper coverage. We got a really spectacular video done so that we were able to, even though she was not directly involved in the planning of the event, just by turning up and having a grand opening ceremony with people with their Trevor, Trevor, it's not Eastman, Tom, Tom, the name is slipping in over. Somebody from the SGP board, from the Small Grants Project board, and a whole lot of other officials were there to help us celebrate the thing. And the fact that the parliamentary rep was there added a certain level of significance to the whole event, and we got really significant coverage. And as I said, we got a, a really well-produced video out of it. So I'm saying that we cannot always expect to hug all the kudos for the, for, the, for, the organizing, for the organization. We have to be able to share it with the parliamentary rep or the minister or whoever, but we have to be sure that we get our little pound of flesh as well. All right, guys? Let's let's wait until we switch over because we are running out of time on on this first. Um, so let me let me end here. We'll switch over to to Terence's feed, okay? And we'll have a we'll continue the conversation right after that, okay, guys? So sorry about that. Just give me. Okay. Let's change host, okay?